Hi everyone, Michelle here from Willowbrook in Westmoreland, New Hampshire, and here are our paint brushes that we turned into cute little Santa slash gnomes. You can, they can really be a gnome or a Santa. Um, and we are going to recreate that using a chip brush. You can pick these up at any hardware store. Um, I have some supplies laid out on the table here. I'm using, my red is Fusion Highlander. My white is Victorian Lace. I'm using a little bit of pink, which is rose water for the nose. We are going to be glazing, using an antique glazing to get that distressed antique look. And gold, metallic gold from Fusion. I have some other things laid out. Most importantly, our molds. We're gonna be using IOD molds, and there are three trimmings molds, which have lots of options for his hat, his brim, the brim of his hat. I chose to use trimmings one, which is this fun little leafy berry, it has little berries in it, which I thought was pretty cute for ours. Um, other things that I'm using, I'm, I'm going to use this brayer, which is an IOD brayer. Comes in handy for lots of projects. I have um, some greenery just from my stash that we'll be using. I have some ribbons. I have a squeegee, but if you don't have a squeegee at home, you could always use a credit card. I have cornstarch and I have rusty wire for the hanger. Okay, so we have our brush and I am using a sponge brush to apply the paint and I am just going to apply the paint to the bristles. And I'm not going to do a full coverage because we can always go back and add more if we need to. I kind of like the brown showing through a little bit. I think that gives it a more vintage uh, vibe. and. You can paint the metal if you want to. You don't have to because we're gonna cover it and if you do see some of the metal shining through, we can go back and paint it. So I am gonna take my heat tool and just give it a quick dry. And we are going to take our Highlander Red if you have a different acrylic red at home, you can use that. And I'm just gonna use an artist brush and I am just going to paint the wood. And I am going to heat set that again and then come back in with another coat. So this is how it looks after one coat. You can see this, the numbers and everything's shining through. However, if we're not gonna be decorating the back of it, so you can just leave it if you wanted to and move on to the next step. Or you can add a second coat of paint to really get good coverage, which is nice. Like I said, I'm not too worried about the metal because the back we're not really going to be seeing too much of. If you wanted to do this um, 3D all the way around, then I would suggest putting on your molds, letting them dry overnight, because otherwise you'd be squishing them down. So for the mold, we're going to be using trimming one. And I'm just getting out my air dry clay by Iron Orchid. It is awesome. So if you haven't tried it, give it a try. Great quality. Dries in about 20, um, 24 hours or so. So for the brim, we're going to make a little snake. But before that, I'm just going to tear off a little piece and roll it into a ball. And we're going to just make his little nose, kind of measure it to see if you like the size. I'm going to take just a little bit off of that.
There we go. So his little nose is rolled. I'm gonna set that aside for later. Okay, so we're going to add, so I have cornstarch and a little brush and I am just gonna dust very lightly the inside of my mold. This will help the clay release easily from it. Now, if you find that you have way too much on there, get turn it over, give it a little tap. I'll do that over here. And then you could use your brush to brush away some of the excess if you'd like. So again, we're gonna roll our clay into a snake and we're gonna press it right into the mold. So as you can see, it's kinda uneven, right? You could really fine tune it pushing down on it, but you could also use your brayer, Iron Orchid Design brayer, and push that and just give it a roll which will flatten it out and push the design, push the clay into the design a little more. So you can see it kind of flattened it out. And then you could also take your squeegee, squeegee back some of the excess clay. Get rid of some of that excess. Kind of go along the edges with your finger. All right, so that looks pretty good to me. So I essentially flattened it out. If I see some spots, I'll fix those, but I essentially flattened that right out. And now with the cornstarch in it, you'll see that it comes out pretty darn easily. So I'm flipping my mold over and essentially it's just falling right out, which is great. All right, so I'm gonna set the mold aside. As you can see, the detail is really, really nice. So I'm taking my Santa and, or gnome, and I'm just gonna kind of measure around. I'm gonna go slightly around his brim, around the sides of the brim, and then I'm gonna use the edge of my squeegee just to trim this off. And so as you can see, it will kind of sit nicely around the sides. So I'm gonna use this as my guide. I'm gonna cut a second piece and then I can save this for another time, roll it back up, put it in, cause I don't think I'll need it. So what I did for this guy is I cut a small piece off for under here cause I wanted to cover the whole metal. And I also use the extra piece here. So what I'm going to do is Using the edge of my squeegee, I am just going to cut it right in half. So now I have two pieces, one of them for up on top. This one can go here and this one can go underneath. So we're going to come back and paint these pieces white, um, glue them on using tight bond quick and thick, which is a super thick fast drying glue and it dries clear so it's, you can paint it as well. So I'm grabbing my Victorian Lace by Fusion. I'm grabbing that and I am going to grab a little artist brush and essentially I'm going to paint over it. The problem is when you're painting clay while it's wet, you, can, you run the risk of distorting the image. So when you're painting it, Give it a, paint it really gently with your brush. You don't want to push down too, too hard. So I'm just going to paint over all of these pieces. Give them just a light coat. I can always go back in and touch up if I need to. And I'm essentially painting them white. First of all, I want them white, but second of all, um, I'm going to be using antiquing glaze and I don't want the antiquing glaze to sit into the clay and adhere to the clay and I can't wipe it back.
Okay, so we have all our pieces lightly coated with paint. I'm gonna throw my paintbrush into the water for now. Put my lid back on my paint, get my dryer out, and I'm going to dry this just because I don't want the paint to be transferring all over my piece. So I'm going to be gluing down my pieces. Like I said, I was gonna be using this one just kind of slightly over the edge of the bristles, like that. Then I'm gonna layer this one over top so it kind of has a cohesive look and, it co it, and we cover all of that metal. So we're gonna take out our tight bond quick and thick. I'm just adding some glue here to my plate. And there's a couple ways you can glue it down. You can use your finger, rub it onto the back. I'm just gonna flip that right back over. So as you can see here, I have some that is kind of going over into the back. And like I said, we're not gonna be doing the back. So when you apply your clay and it's wet, and if you were to go and apply it to the back and push down on it, you're gonna flatten out your image, your mold on the front. So that's why we're not doing the back. If you wanted to do the back, I would wait for this to dry and then go back in and do it. All right, and so the other way you can apply, and I am just gonna grab a quick baby, so I just have some baby wipes sitting here on the side to clean my hands. So um, I'm gonna just grab another artist brush. It really doesn't matter which brush you use. So I'm just grabbing another artist brush, and this is the other way you can do the glue. You can use the artist brush and just paint it right on kind of have a little more control with the artist brush. You can get right down into the details. Okay. So you kind of decide which side you want down. I'm going to do this side. And I'm going to wrap it around. So see, it layers nicely right over that piece we put down. And if you wanted them going the same, oops, as you can see, I just got a little bit paint there because this wasn't dry. I'm not worried about it. I will go back and touch it up. So if you want the leaves going the same direction, don't do what I just did. Turn it over and go ahead and adhere it. Okay, so that's that. It's on the sides. You can press them together. The thing about clay is you can really maneuver it the way you want it. And like I said, if there's any metal showing and you don't like it, you can go back over it with the white paint. So now that I have um, destroyed the handle, which I think I could actually wipe off. We'll see, let's try it. So I'm just using my baby wipe and it is coming off pretty well. So you want to make sure your hands are pretty clean so that you don't get the transfer of paint. Okay. And I see a couple, a little bit up here, but see the glue is actually already drying. So when you place it down, be pretty sure about where you want to place your mold. Okay, so I grabbed my red paint out. I decided that I'm going to touch it up before I move on. I'm just drying off the, red, the brush I used with the red earlier. And I am going to just touch up all the red. 
this would be a good time to try and get into the nooks and crannies here. If you wanted to put red, you can do that, or you can go back in with white. Okay, that looks better. I'm gonna throw my paintbrush back into the water. Close up my red paint. I grab my heat tool out to heat set the paint so that we don't have that issue again. Okay, I'm pulling back out my little nose that I set aside and while that's continuing to dry, I'm just gonna paint up my little nose in rose water paint. This had the glue on it, so make sure you don't mistake your paintbrush that has the glue. So I am just going to paint his little nose pink. You can glue it down and paint it first, but I don't want to get pink all over the white brim. So I'm just going to set that down for a sec. I'm going to keep my paintbrush out. wipe my hands off so I don't transfer any of that paint. I am going to set this pink aside for just a second and so what I'm going to do here is take my squeegee. You can use um, a squeegee or whatever you have at home and I'm just going to notch out a place for his nose to set and I'm gonna remove the clay. So essentially I just took out a little clay for his nose to sit recessed into the brim, as opposed to it sitting under the brim, which I think gives it a much cuter effect. So I'm actually just dipping my nose into the paint, I mean into the glue, and I am just going to push it right in. He's already looking cute, isn't he? Okay. So we have our nose in. So I'm taking the brush that I had a pink on, kind of tapping it off a little bit. And what I'm gonna do is paint underneath his little brim to give him some cheeks, pink cheeks. And go up into the brim of the hat if you want. And that's all I did to give him some cute little rosy cheeks. Done with my paintbrush. I'm going to throw it back into the water. Put the lid on my paint. Now he looks cute just as he is, but if you want to end, I think he looks adorable just as is. You could add a hanger, but if you want to do all the little embellishments, we'll continue on. So the brim of his hat, or I'm sorry, the top of his hat, I am going to just set this aside for a little bit later. I did forget to mention that when you're done with your clay, make sure you wrap it back up and put it into some kind of airtight container or a Ziploc so it stays for a little while. Okay, set that aside. So before I glue this piece down, I am going to add on the metal embellishment, the metal hanger. If you choose not to do the metal hanger and you want to do the ribbon, you can wait. You don't have to do, you can wait to do this step. I just don't want to have the metal destroy this if once I put it on and it will because it's still wet. If you let this dry overnight at home, then you can add your metal hanger later. So I'm taking my wire and I'm not measuring. I'm just um, grabbing a little bit. Get that out. Okay, I'm using my metal clippers and I am going to clip that wire off. And that was just wire I picked up at Home Depot. Okay, so now I'm just gonna form the hanger. 
and I'm just kind of making a U shape with the metal. I'm gonna stick the metal in from behind and kind of push it up to determine where I want my hanger, how large I want my hanger. To make the curly cues that I have, I'm kind of gonna spread this out. I took the back of a paintbrush and essentially just wrapped it. Sometimes it's easier to use pliers to help with that. So I don't ruin that, I'm gonna move it. Okay, and then finagle that out. And you have a little curly cue on the end, which I will probably make curlier by just twisting the wire with my, so you can maneuver it however you need to with your pliers. All right, and we're gonna make this one into a curly cue as well. And there you have it. So I have mine off to the side a little bit, which I will leave him like that. So essentially that's kind of how it looks. Okay, since we have our metal down, we'll take our glue and glue the brim of his hat down. I'm gonna have it just slightly below the hole, just slightly be below the hole so that we can add some little greenery and embellishments as well. Okay, so decide what piece you want. I think I like that. And then you can use your squeegee to cut it off and store this for later in your airtight bag. Okay, moving along. So, grab glue with my paintbrush. And I'm just gluing that down. And I like where that is. Okay. So we're not gonna mess with that too much more. So I'm essentially done with my glue. So I'll throw my brush into the water. Okay. So now comes the antiquing and adding all the embellishments. So I'm using Fusion's Antiquing Glaze. Ideally, you would let this dry overnight and come back and do it. But for the sake of the video, we'll continue on. So I am just going to grab a brush. This one has an angle, kind of will help me get into the little details. And what I'm doing with the Antiquing Glaze is Getting right down into the nooks and crannies of the design. Because we want the design to look, I want him to look a little more aged. So this will just sit in all those little, the depths of the mold. And when we wipe it back, it will have an aged appearance. It helps to pick them up and move them around and look to see if you're missing any spots. You can go as heavy or as light with the glaze as you want. And you can always go back and add more if you need to. 
And if you find there's some spots that are too heavy, you can always, um, my hands were still have wet paint on them, so. So we'll get this guy a little glaze. Okay. All right, so we have our glaze on. I'm gonna leave my brush out in case I want to add any more. I'm gonna grab another clean baby wipe. So this is a baby wipe, and I am just going to wipe off the excess, being very, very gentle. <clears throat> Excuse me. You want to be very gentle with your with the pressure because the clay is still wet and you can run the risk of squishing it so you don't want to do that and i'm just finding a clean spot and i'm going to keep those guys up for a little bit and I'm going to this is freshly glued so it is coming up just a little bit it will adhere down it once we leave it alone okay so I'm pretty happy with that That looks pretty good. So I still have some antiquing glaze on my brush and all I'm gonna do is go underneath the brim of his hat and add a little bit of glaze for a shadow effect. Don't forget the sides. Take my baby wipe and just kind of wipe it back. So now he has an aged look it gives it a little shadow, but you still see the pink coming through, which is nice. Okay. Set aside that wipey for a sec. I am going to heat set this. Okay, I have metallic gold by Fusion. And Fusion lives up to its name, it fuses. So if your lid gets stuck, give, get some, get a screwdriver out and just give it a little lift and it should open very easily. So as you can see, it has a really, really nice shimmer. And I use it almost like a gilding. So I dip my finger in, I'm gonna tap it off on my plate and I'm just gonna hit the high, point, the high points of the mold with the gold. Grab a little more. And all of these products are water-based, so if you decide that it's too much or too little and you wanna go back, you can always paint over it and start again. Do a little gold on here. Okay, so the other thing I did with the gold is I touched the sides of the wood because I thought that gave it a nice um, accent. Kind of made it cohesive. And I'm just using my finger to go over the edge. Now, if you go a little overboard and there's too much, don't worry too much about it because we are going to be wrapping a ribbon around it and you won't see it. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. I'm 
and if you wanted to, you can go on the back. I'll touch this up after, but again, you're not gonna actually see the back of it, so you don't really have to. Okay, so make sure my hands are somewhat clean and move on. So the only other thing I did with paint off really quickly. The only other thing I did with the white paint is I took the end of my paintbrush, kind of dipped it in the paint a little bit, and gave him a little accent on his nose. A little highlight. Okay, so that's actually it for paint. I'm going to put all my brushes away, put it back in the water. Go ahead and move this. Okay, so now the fun part of embellishing him. So I have all my embellishments out. I have my gold jingles. I have some greenery. These were all from my stash. I just broke up some holly that I had and just to get the little leaves. Um, so we'll decide on that in a sec. As for the ribbons, I had all kinds of ribbons picked out. And I used gold on this one, but I kind of like the green. So I think we're gonna go with green for this, this Santa gnome. Yeah, we'll dub him Santa gnome. Okay, so to apply your ribbon, you can have it go across and then up. which I actually kind of like. So I am gonna start by hot gluing this piece down and I have my glue gun already heated up. I'm just gonna put a dab of glue there. And since I'm running across the top of the brim, I am going to put another dab of glue right here. And then we will work our way up. And I'm twisting kind of at an angle. And on each round that I go up, I'll put a little dab of glue to hold it down. And put another double glue right there. And I didn't cut it ahead of time just because I wasn't sure how much I was going to use. And I pretty much like that, so I'm gonna cut it. Get that out of the way. Just trim that right off. And he looks so cute. I love it. Okay. So we, I'll move all of these excess ribbons over. And now we're gonna figure out our greenery. Do you see what I was saying about the um, this part getting ruined with the metal? which is why if you are using metal, I would suggest letting this dry overnight. It's not necessary as long as you're careful. And you could always reform your clay if you need to. And it's just an accent piece, so you don't really see the whole design anyway. Okay, so am I going to use a shimmer? That one's kind of pretty. 
but I do kind of think this goes well with that. So let's cut a couple of these off. Just gonna add a little glue to that and glue it as close as I can to the rim you could since it's still wet you could actually just tuck it right into the clay so I just tucked it kind of right into the clay and then I'm gonna add a piece going the opposite direction just for visual interest this one's kind of nice because it's already cut like that, so I'm gonna use that one. And then I'm going to add my Jingle Doll. A little glue to the jingle. Sit it up in the corner. Here's our little Santa gnome all completed. He is so adorable. We do hope you try this at home with your friends and family. Thank you so much for watching and for all of these products you can find them on our website at willowbrooknh.com. Thanks again for watching.